The last player to wear number two for the Raptors made it a parade inside their city. Therefore, Toronto's most recent pickup in 2023 summer has a lot to live up to, but who knows, a change of scenery can sometimes make all the difference. In 80 games in 22-23, this product of San Diego State University owned a defensive rating which equates to what would have been the sixth best mark among players at the small forward position. Problem is, to qualify among the defensive rating leaders, you have to play at least 24 minutes per game. Missing only two games for the entire season with Charlotte and Philadelphia last year, the brother of Jaden and Jalen McDaniels averaged 0.4 minutes less than the necessary qualification to rank at the top of his position in defensive rating. That could very well be one of the reasons for why Raptor president Masai Ujiri was able to snag the 24-year-old with a 7-foot wingspan and 33.5-inch vertical for a two-year contract worth $9.3 No one is talking about the Raptors' newest wing. Stay tuned to see why they should be. Right quick, according to YouTube's analytics, 78.6% of you watching right now are not subscribed, so to support the channel I make a living off, please subscribe. Also leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Be sure to watch this video all the way through, and follow my Instagram and X accounts at dflowhoops. Thank you greatly for any bit of support, back to the content. Historically, the Toronto Raptors aren't known for having much off-season luck, especially when it comes to free agency, but the franchise had an under-the-radar yet solid off-season in 2023 that you should pay attention to. From stealing Grady Dick as the 13th pick, to stealing Marquise Noel as an undrafted free agent, to signing Dennis Schroeder for the backcourt, one of the fastest pick-and-roll creators in the world, to re-signing prevalent rim-protecting force Jakob Pertl for the front court, the Raptors also added a player on the wing with untapped potential. With their signing of Jalen McDaniels, the Raptors are acquiring a perimeter weapon who fits right in with their cast of players with a lengthy reach advantage. Between 56 games with the Hornets and 24 games with the 76ers, Jalen's fourth year in the NBA last season saw him post career highs in all of minutes, points, steals, assists, and blocks per game to go along with field goal, three-point, and free throw attempts. Last month, speaking on his arrival in the six, McDaniels said, I felt like it was a good fit for me. They have a lot of guys like myself. Long, athletic, very versatile, can bring different things to the table on the court. I feel like I just fit their playing style and fit with the guys on the team as well. It feels good just to be wanted by the organization. From what Jalen displayed over his first four years in the pros, offensively speaking, He's somewhat one-dimensional, being a primary off-ball cutter. According to Sports Illustrated, over half of Jalen's field goal attempts came without a dribble. However, by the eye test, he's shown a ton of upside creating off the bounce, and also during his introductory press, Jalen stated that he feels he's got a great chance to take the next step in his development, with a Raptor team that's become one of the five squads in the association over the last five years to win the Larry O'Brien Trophy. Jalen spoke on what he could bring to the table offensively, saying, People 6'9 don't always handle the ball, come off screens, do stuff like that. I feel that I have that in my game as well. Just being versatile, shooting the ball, catch and shoot threes, making plays off the bounce, and being a facilitator, I feel like I have that in me, so I hope you all get to see this year. Jalen had six games in the 23 season where he scored at least 20 points, two of which came against the Raptors' division rival in the Boston Celtics. He had a notably high 15 games where he scored at least 15 points and 33 games where he scored in double figures, including a stretch where he put up 12 games in a row of scoring at least 9, 11 of which were double figure scoring games. McDaniels doesn't have to go outside of himself based off the fact that he's going to be playing next to a ton of ball handlers in Toronto. Between Dennis, Marquise, Pascal, Scotty, even potential Rookie of the Year Grady, there's a bunch of players on the Raps who are capable of creating shots for themselves and others. For McDaniels, in Serbian Darko Radjakovic's offensive system, he'll need to do what he does best. Fill out the lane and make sound reads, whether it's being the screen and roll man, cutting back door to the basket, or using flare slash cross slash UCLA slash hammer slash floppy slash flex slash back slash double slash elevator screens to navigate his way around the perimeter. Given Toronto's aforementioned volume of creators, Jalen shouldn't feel the need to force it by creating off the dribble too much, but it's nice to know he's willing and able to do so. As the tape displays from over the last few years, you can see that Jalen's going to be a lob threat for the Raptors with his springiness, which should make him a great fit next to a guy who has a knack for throwing them at a high volume, Intruder. 
He's got an incredibly fundamental shooting release from distance, as note the 90 degree angle not just that his shooting release winds up into, but that his lower body position forms when landing after attempting his shot. Parallel footing. On shots with 6 plus feet of space in 22-23, McDaniels took 1.6 triples per game and made a very solid 37% of them. Jalen's mechanics are really impressive, especially for a player with the height of a traditional power forward. He's swiftly able to transition into his release after catching kickouts, no matter the quality of the pass. His shooting ability should make him an effective floor spacer for Toronto and allow him to slide over to play the stretch 4, potentially even the stretch 5 spot at times. It's a luxury that you can play him as the pick and pop guy given he can also handle the rock in the open court. On the glass, Jalen's shown the capacity to be able to find balance in the midst of heavy traffic to levitate for O boards over multiple defenders. His 63 total offensive rebounds were 24th at the small forward spot in 2022-23, but among those top 24 ranked players in this category at his position, he had the fourth least amount of total minutes racked up. McDaniels adds to a Raptor team that was second in offensive rebounds per game last year, and could form some lethal O-rebounding lineups with Scotty Barnes and OG Ananobi, who were number one and six respectively in offensive rebounding per 40 minutes at the small forward spot. Displaying Jalen's self-proclaimed versatility, here the near seven-footer collects a DHO from Plumley, stutter steps into the lane, and floats it over the top of one of the best paint protectors in basketball in Brooke Lopez. That's tough. Another instance of him working as the pick-and-roll creator, as he gets past Jalen Brown off the bounce, pulls off a shifty in-and-out dribble, embraces the contact, and maintains control under the pressure of a perfectly fundamental two-hand straight-up contest. Good D, better O. This time, attacking all-star Julius Randle, who's the low man in this case, Jalen's rangy one-two step takes him from the elbow all the way into the restricted area, and with his long reach, after that, all he has to do is extend his arm to get a wide-open finish. Watch his poise, balance, plus scoring impulsivity to pull off a low sweep through, fend off the contact from Batman by going to a shimmy shake, and pivoting around for the contested fader. And in true jersey number two fashion, he gets the Kawhi roll. From navigating in the dunker spot, to pushing the tempo before utilizing nifty dribble combos and high arcing floaters, to catching and shooting with a hand in his face on the wing, there's a number of roles for McDaniels to fill out, and Rajakovic is vamped from the previous year offensive system. His bread and butter, however, scarily has barely been broken down aside from statistically in the intro of this video. A separate vid evaluating film on Jalen's defense could without a doubt be put together. Let me know your interest level in that by liking, commenting, and subscribing. You're the best for watching all the way through. Thanks to the best Hoopstock community on YouTube. This was your boy DFlow, and I'll see you next video.